My name is Dan Young and welcome to the Millionaire Code Podcast. I'm a self-made guy that has made multi-million dollar businesses from scratch. There's no way I could have done it without the help of mentors who provided me with the wisdom and guidance to help me create the formula for success. Each week on my podcast, I'm going to interview a hugely successful business person that will provide you their secrets to success. And that way, you can act as your mentor too. I can't wait to share their stories and takeaways with you. Welcome to Dan's Millionaire Code. Hey everybody, Dan Young here with Dan's Millionaire Code. And you know, every single week I bring with you an entrepreneur or someone who's changing the planet in a very positive way to share how they built everything, a huge empire from nothing, from literally nothing. And um, the reason why we do this is so that we can help you start your own empire, or if you're working somewhere, be a great leader in the empire that you're working at. Um, there is no fee. There's nothing you need to buy. I ask just a few things of you. One, if you love this podcast, please rate it a five star and share it with your friends, subscribe, like it, love it, all those kind of things to people who may find value. Two, execute like crazy. If you're thinking about starting your own restaurant, which uh, Rob's going to show you today how to do, um, execute it. And because he could literally charge you a hundred thousand dollars or 200,000 or a million dollars for this information, but you're getting charged zero. So you need to execute it. Three, with all this massive success and happiness and money you make from this and all the good feelings, take 10% of that and give it to a great charitable cause. You know, we love Operation Underground Railroad and Nuzzles and Co to save all the dogs and cats. Operation Underground Railroad to save the kids that are being kidnapped and enslaved. Um, those are things that we support. Take 10% of your gain Give it back because it'll come to you back a thousandfold. Uh, without further ado, I have Rod Livingston here. Hello, Rod. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so Rod has been my friend for uh, for quite a while. Um, yeah. Since you're like pretty new, actually, with your restaurant, we've been big fans. Um, R and R Barbecue. You founded it, and it, it's a lunch spot that literally I've been going to since forever. Yeah, in Six South and Three Hundred West, and people told us told us that shop would never go there there's too many homeless there's no parking which there isn't and that there's no would, parking because the parking lot's full yeah because it's full <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's we're there it's good and then you opened um another location out south um, yeah on uh, no, 106 south which is great it was an old denny's building smart buy a lot busier than when denny's was there now <laughs> Yeah, that that building, uh, again, people said you'd never make it there because you got to go up, make a U-turn and come in. But I, I also figured out that, you know, if you got to say quarter mile one way and a quarter mile back, does that mean they wouldn't go another quarter mile just straight? Mm -hmm. Of course they are. If it's good food, they're going to come to your location where it is. Lines of people packed. Yeah. Like, I'm talking packed. And people are ordering, like, the big giant combos. Like, I, I see people there with, like, more food than you yeah, can imagine. Yeah, a ton of catering to go out of there. We have a catering center too, but we'll do a ton of go out of there. And it's it's cool. just phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, you see, I pull up and I see people loading up their boxes of food and wow. families come in. I kind of think, well, when did when did they decide they're going to come here today? Yeah. You know, just the averages. Like, how come you don't get like 10 million show up today and, one, and no, nobody one day, you know? It's just amazing. I think we sat down and what was different, because I've been to a lot of different barbecue places, you know? And sometimes these places had food that was okay, but not consistently good. Right. That's one problem I saw. But a lot of places, like, you'd go in and the tables were greasy and the decor was horrible and there was no music and the employees were kind of not or subpar. Your place had every sense, all five senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, taste, dialed right. in. Uh, how did you, how, did you just, like, invent that or how did that? <laughs> well, the, the truth <laughs> is it took us. Before we start, if you want to get into that, before we started, we were mortgage brokers for years. Mortgage brokers? Yeah, for like 20 cool. years, you know, suit and tie, penny loafers, all that stuff. Um, prior to that, I grew up in California, uh, surf champion when I was 15 years old. I was just boy surfing champion. Wow, dude. Moved out here to go back to school. Thought I would always end up back in California, but, you know, you get a girlfriend, a wife, kids, and mortgage, and you, you just can't move that quickly. And we were in the mortgage business to about 2008 when it all hit. And, you know, we, we were, prior to that, we started doing a little barbecue contest just on the side to have fun. And actually, Pat's Barbecue was a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And I, I lent him some money, something, or st and stuff. And he said, here, take 
take this rig home and go cook on it. I had no idea what I was doing. You didn't know how to make it in barbecue? No. It, 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 You're a mortgage dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really didn't know, but my wife saw me uh, sitting on the side of the house with a smoker going and uh, adult sold in my uh, little solo cup. And she goes, you're going to get one of these, aren't you? <laughs> like, and then about a month later, I had one made from Texas and brought over. Whoa. But, you know, the mortgage business was drying off or, or dying off for a little while. And, but it wasn't fun anymore. We wanted to be, I always have regrets about not being in the surf industry somewhere mm -hmm. doing something. Mm -hmm. And we started barbecuing and it was fun. And we're thinking, how can we do this and make money at it? And, you know, we had cooked a lot at the house, um, why we're doing contests to perfect it. And we went into one con uh, amateur contest. I think my brother got first and I got third or fourth. And then we just like, okay, this is fun. We can do this. <laughs> we went to another contest in Mesquite. Actually on uh, Barbecue Pitmasters, the first show, they call our name fifth place in brisket, which is really good because we thought we burnt our brisket and we just chopped up the burn ends and only put in burn ends and got fifth. Whoa. So it was like a shock to us. They're like, yeah, hey, this is great. <laughs> you know, from there on, we started winning more and more, and we were kind of uh, soft and brisket. And uh, there was a, I can't think of his name right now, he's passed away, but really a good friend to R&R. &R. And he, he kind of like, you guys got to get your brisket better. You need to look at this, look at that. And, and, and about a month later, we were winning. And he goes, I've never seen anybody like really go after a meat and then turn it around to where they're winning with it. So we really got into what we were doing. I mean... Now we have a total of nine grand champions, which isn't that much overall to guys in the United States, but Utah, you got to travel so far. Mm -hmm. There's not that many in Utah where Oklahoma and places, you can find one, three or four contests with 100 miles of your house every weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, we just kept competing and doing really well. And, and, you know, and then you give your food to neighbors and stuff, but you can't go by them to say if you're going to do well in a contest because contest is different kind of food. It's it's um, richer, sweeter. Uh, judges only get one bite, so they have oh. to they have to be on it. One bite. Yeah, That's they it. take one or two bites. Otherwise, they're going to have uh, third uh, six pieces times four, and they would they couldn't get to the end yeah. end meat. But so you know we were doing contests, and and people were starting to buy our food. That's when you see people really like your food. Okay. If they're willing to pay for it. Neighbors will eat the crummiest food for free, <laughs> right? But it's when people buy it and they start saying, I like this. You ought to do a shop. So where did you sell your, you start selling to neighbors? Yeah. My brother would say, hey, I'm, you know, put on Facebook. Hey, I'm going to cook 20 pork butts. And he, people would just come and pick them up at like five o'clock on Saturdays. Just come by your house? Yeah. Buy yeah. It? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so we're starting to buy it that way. And then we did a small catering job um, for um, Taylorsville City Council. Wow. And they loved it and stuff. That's pretty so cool. at the same time we're doing that, we, we're looking for a shop. We we went to all kinds of different barbecue stores. We looked at different restaurants, our barbecue stores to go and see how we think our food compares to them. And there, you can have more than one good food. Mm -hmm. But and people just have different preferences. Probably like your computer business, there's other good computers, but for what you guys do, you're the best at it. Right, right. And that's what you got to be. You got to be the best at what you do. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, I've never done payroll. I've never done <laughs> scheduling. Uh, I've never done the books, uh, all that kind of stuff. I had people do what I didn't do well. Mm -hmm. Some of them weren't very well at that, or good at that either. But, <laughs> but that's, you know, it's, it, you, you do what you do best. And that's, for me, it was talking to the people and stuff. How many years ago was this when you started? Uh, it was six years ago, the first six years in April. Um, and that was the one in 6,300 West. So this has been pretty fast, actually. I mean, six years is not that long, really. It's yeah. Been... I mean, it, it took us a couple of years to find a place because other places we looked at, um, you know, what it cost us several hundred thousand, three, four hundred thousand. We opened up the first one with $65,000. Wow. So it was uh, me and my twin brother, Roger, very cute. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Reda Fuad, I don't know if you know him, mm. but uh, Super Top Secret Marketing, STS oh. Marketing. Oh, yeah, I heard of them, yeah. And Jared there, they put in the money, actually. We, I put in like maybe 10 or 15, and Roger did too, and they put in like 65. And that was our seed money to get that going. Within a month, we needed a bigger smoker. And when we, when we were building it, we had all the kitchen done, and we started putting stuff on the walls. And my brother uh, sent a thing to Reda saying, hey, we're ready to go. We're going to start painting walls. He goes, hey. Don't touch anything. Go get back in the kitchen and do what you do best. Just keep getting ready to open. 
he came in and brought guys, okay, we'll do this wall red, this one black. We'll do a chalkboard oh, wow. menu up here. Uh, we'll put your logo here. We got this uh, little montage. So he thought of that design? Yeah. And so they nailed it on that. It's, it's like, okay, you guys knew exactly what to do. Wow. And so we integrated that in all Is that what they do? Or do they... they do uh, marketing, video marketing, so they get uh, it. websites, um, branding. Yeah, they get it. Mm -hmm. They get it. He's no longer our partner. He sold out when we um, went to the next step. But it was having somebody like that to like, you know, you do what you do best and let somebody else do the do what they do best. And and it cool. just it, it was incredible. We we love it. We get compliments on their oh your branding is so cool, you know, and, and Yo, that's it, it is amazing. So we we um you know open up the shop within a month, we needed another smoker uh in that restaurant. And um, and then people just kept on coming. And and really what it is about for us is, yeah, you have to have great food. you got to constantly watch people. And you I don't know you used to live there, right? Pretty much. You can go too far watching people, but you still got to keep on them, for better words, to make sure they don't change the quality. And, uh, you know, well, I like to do it this way. Like, no, no, no. We got the nine-time grand champions. We, you know, we're this, we're that. And, you know, until it says your name on the door, you need to do it our way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure your way is great, but we're always open to hear things. There's been a couple of things I can't, you know, exactly what they are now, but there's times we said, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll incorporate that into what we do. Mm -hmm. But um, so for us, it was having really good food and making sure uh, that every customer was happy, mm -hmm. that if something didn't look good. My neighbors, the first week they came into the restaurant, like they still say, Rod, I remember that you, something came out and you didn't like it and before we can even bite into it to see. You pulled it out, took it back, and brought us fresh ones. Wow. It's, it's, it's that kind of service. We have a, a person, and I was more, I'll admit, Roger did more of the heavy lifting. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to go out and play mayor, we call it. That's the right. Yeah, we're role. talking and socializing. The mayor role, of somebody going out there, <laughs> hi, how you doing? Uh, how's the food? Everything good? Uh, been in here before or something? You know, make conversation with them so they feel like somebody really cares about us. Mm -hmm. And what it really equates to is, it's about the whole experience. Um, you've got customer service on phones and stuff like that. It's having somebody that that will do anything they can. Something's going to go wrong. I any business, right? I did mean, you did you put a mayor in later when you were not able to be at every location? You know. Yeah. Once once we moved up, they're supposed to. The managers are supposed to be. That's the mayor. The mayor. Um, there's also whoever is the lobby person at that time. They need to take over the mayor role, which is really hard. Do you have like an instruction manual? Like, okay, you give that hire that person. Okay, your job is to be the mayor. Yeah, there, there's a position you called go do this mayor that. that we incorporate into other things, so they're just not out there. But um, it, it's really neat when you see somebody out there, and you can tell they got some personality, and you can tell they, hi, how you doing? Everything good? Hey, let me get that for you. You know, there's always that sense of urgency of to we, make somebody happy. We call that in our computer business uh, for our managers and sales managers. Um, to touch every table. Right. right. Hey, tables. how you doing? How you doing? Oh, great. My name is everything good? Yeah. And like every great restaurant, great restaurant has that mayor, right? Right. Right. And yeah, so it's just, you know, I mean, I'll go out there. You're the ultimate mayor. <laughs> actually, I am. <laughs> He's the kid. He wrote the book on being a mayor. But yeah, it's it's actually just making, I mean, we've, we've had senators, governors. Mm -hmm. We do some of the biggest catering jobs. And we took on jobs too. And that's an... You know, so if you're starting out a restaurant, find the cheapest location you can and make it work. Mm -hmm. Find a place that you don't have to put three, four, five, nine hundred thousand dollars in. I've seen guys do that. Yeah, I've had friends open up a restaurant, spend eight hundred thousand, and be like, "This is going to take me my whole life to pay this loan back." Right, right. Yeah. So that first one we opened up with, you know, probably eighty-five grand and minimum staff. Um, and then within a couple months, we had to get the other end of the building, even though they're not connected. We had the other building that we used for catering. Wow. And the reason we got that so quickly is because Roger was talking to the guys that do Days of 47, which is like our Pioneer's Day. Mm. And Roger was talking to him. They said, man, we love your barbecue. We think this will be good with Days of 47, you know, with the cowboy theme and all that. Mm -hmm. He goes, can you do like 800 to 1,000 people five nights in a row? And Roger told him yes. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> what, how do you, how are we going to do that? He goes, well, we do 200 now, right? So it's only like four times a night. We'll do four <laughs> times that much every night. We had to buy another smoker quick and this and that. We had another operation guys come in. Um, we have great staff that just doesn't quit. 
Yeah. So you got to get people that are involved, um, that really believe in your brand, that want to see the growth of your brand too. Let me take notes on that. One. There you go. And it's we've been really fortunate. We've had some really good people that have been with us for the full six years or just about. Wow. And you know we've seen we have one girl that we one of my other uh, uh, he was a manager at the time. He hired this girl from Taco Bell, <laughs> and she was making like seven seventy five an hour. Mm-hmm. She's still with us. Wow. Uh, she's uh, been in a manager position. And then she goes, well, I, I really don't want to work that much. I want to have a baby. And that's another thing is to work with your employees as their life changes so they can still, it's so much cheaper to keep an employee than it is to retrain them. Mm-hmm. And somebody new coming in, show them your ways, find out if it's a f- or fit or not. So she took off time to have a baby, came back, and now she's a nighttime manager. Okay. And, and we've changed her lives. So we try to do things. For her that maybe other people wouldn't do. Like she called it, hey, my car's broke on the freeway. I, I, I don't know when I'll get in. Roger's like, hey, tell me where it's at. I'll meet you there. I'll call my guy to tow your car and we'll, we'll get it fixed for you. We'll, don't worry about the cost right now. We'll work that out later on. You could pay me by the month or something. And just those kind of things when somebody really needs a hand. So be flexible and yeah. give a hand. Okay, um, good. So we, we, we have done a lot of stuff. One guy had a... a uh, of course, I won't mention his name. Had a DUI, and we and he thought we were going to fire him because you really need to have a license if you're a manager to drive around and, and hey, I need to get something real quick. But we worked with him, and through his all time, he couldn't drive. He can he could drive it after a year or so later, and he's still with us. Loves the brand. Loves that we gave him that opportunity because it would have been really hard for him to find another job. Yeah. You really care about your people then. Yeah, yeah. And and we care about giving back to the community. When we first opened up, um, the shop, I mean, people were saying, like, it'd be like two years before you make money in the restaurant and you won't get a salary. Mm-hmm. We didn't pay all of our money back, of course, in the first month, but we were already making money after the first month. That's fast. Yeah, yeah. And so um, Harley Davidson came to us. We, we I didn't have a bike then, but, it, you know, I guess they got me to buy a bike. But uh, <laughs> a good salesman. But... They came to us for Christmas time. They're doing a, a Christmas dinner for the road home. They had buses pick them up, the road home, bring them to their location. They had gifts and Santa Claus and all these kind of things. And we, uh, they, they came to us and said, what can you do for a dinner? And I said, well, let me talk to my brother and see. And I called the guy back and I, and, well, I talked to Roger and he goes, so are we doing it for free? Are they paying for some cost? Because we're a new company then. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we just both at the same time, because we're twins, we say the same things. Uh, we both said, hey, let's just let's just do it. We'll fund it. Wow. And we called them back and, and we said, what do, you, what do you got? You guys looking to pay for it or what? They said, well, just give us a good deal so we can help people and, and stuff because they spent a fortune on Christmas gifts. And we said, hey, we'll just do it so you guys can put more money for Christmas gifts wow. or whatever you want to do. And the reward out of that, it still hits me today to think that we fed 250 people. That was the first big thing we we. We really did. It's pretty cool. Um, and like you say, giving back, we, we also give back to Police Wives of Utah. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's always good to have the police in your hand. We got, we got uh, mm-hmm. somebody came and broke something in, and they, those guys came and they were on it. But we you did a lot, with, yeah, a lot with Police, uh, police Wives of Utah. We've um, cooked for the governor at his mansion. We've, um, you guys are everywhere, like um, also in this big sports arena. Yeah, we're, we're in the Jazz Center, or yeah. the uh, Vivint Smart Home Arena. Uh-huh. We have food there. We also yeah, do all the VIPs. We're the most uh, ordered food item in the suites. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, beer and barbecue, even though it's yeah. Utah. It's <laughs> People love it so. But uh, it, it's all about, I mean, really our pillars are great food, experience, and giving back to the community. That's good. I'm going to make food, experience, and giving back to the community. Right, because it's just... I mean, there's, uh, there's, you know, it's amazing what your restaurant becomes. One, probably one of the greatest emails or Facebook messages I got was some guy said, hey, uh, and, and I don't know how long before or after, but he sent me an email and just said, hey, I wanted to thank you. Uh, uh, Salt Lake Store is the last place me and my son had dinner together. And so obviously his son passed away and that's what he remembers is coming to R&R and having a a dad oh, wow. father day. And I, I remember going to dinner with my dad. Those days don't last forever. Mm-hmm. So you just, you never know what impact you're going to have on somebody. You know, we do a lot with uh, uh, kids. What is it? It's a, a 
Cancer Foundation for Kids. I oh. can't think of the name. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roger did a video with this, no, a picture with this girl. Mm -hmm. And just a cute little girl. And when uh, it was Make-A-Wish. And so they had a big Make-A-Wish party for her. Mm -hmm. And they get to pick a meal. And her meal mm -hmm. was mac and cheese from R&R. &R. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she wanted everybody to have just mac and cheese. And they said, no, we'll get some chicken and other stuff, too. <laughs> and Roger took a picture with her, this bald-headed little girl with a princess outfit on. And I said, why didn't you take a movie with her? He goes, I tried, but I kept crying. I couldn't get the movie done. <laughs> so it's just, cool. there's just, there's just, there's just incredible feeling of being able to help people along the way. So it, it always looks like trajectory goes like this with entrepreneurs, but... I'm going to shift gears on a, on a question. What, what is the most challenging, scary thing, man, during this whole journey? Uh, it's when you sign a million dollar uh, construction loan or, or <laughs> that. You know, our second building we bought. Um, and my wife's a CPA, so she's a little more conservative. Mm -hmm. Her family's teachers, they all those kind of jobs. And her, her grandfather was a great entrepreneur, though. But for her, some of the stuff I get us into is like, Maybe you should have talked to more, me about it more, but they've all, they've all worked out overall. It's, Luckily, it's the yeah. net gain, right? And so, you know, it just, it's hard working with your twin brother at times because you both want the same things, but sometimes you get there in different directions. Mm -hmm. And that could be a little aggravating. Usually little brother, sister, spouse mm -hmm. arguments, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, employees are a good thing. You know, just, you like to believe you can trust everybody, but I know there's people that we didn't, check up on and they might have um added to their income a little bit oh because we're so trusting you know it's like i would never you know i like to think i'm that kind of guy if you gave me a thousand bucks and said i'll be back in a year your thousand bucks will still be there even if i'm starving you know mm -hmm. and but you just got to really watch employees that's that's the hard oh. thing and and you know They'll show their colors after a while, but you you still have to keep a track on everything, and and right. we we let some of that go sometimes, um, and not to overwork yourself too. You got to have balance, mm -hmm. um, but in the very beginning, just plan on being there a lot, mm -hmm. of making sure everybody's doing it the way you want. They're making the plates the way you want. Um, you know, you, we'd have managers when we first started. We'd come in and. Hey, I thought we'd make breakfast for everybody today. Uh -huh. And like, okay, once in a while is fine. But, you know, then they start thinking it's their generosity, uh -huh. not ours. And it's like, guys, you got to be a little careful. We do have to make money here, you know. Mm -hmm. And restaurant, you know, your, your margins are pretty tight. It's, it's especially barbecue, it's mostly proteins. Mm -hmm. So Expensive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, overall, it's, it's, it's been an incredible ride to... You know, see your stuff in ads or TV. And we also worked a lot of uh, TV shows, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the morning shows and stuff like that. And, and Pretty cool. got a lot of promotion, self-promotion there, too. I see, I, saw, I see you guys everywhere. Which is yeah, amazing. I'm not personally, I'm not really big on social media. Mm -hmm. I think the best way is to you have to have some, but you, it, it shouldn't look like uh, a magazine where every picture looks like it's staged and this oh, and that, yes. you know. Um, show some personality stuff. Uh, show help in the community. You have a lot of people, though, in your, in your ads. We've too, got, right? like, yeah. People and food. Yeah, and now we have a lot more because I've stepped back. I'm retired now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so let's yeah. let's speak about that, though. So you ended up transacting. Yeah, so we, we uh, partnered up, and uh, we got a pretty good chunk of change. Um, I put a lot of that money into different investments with different companies. I get a residual income that comes in every month or quarter. Uh, you know, you pay off all your debt. I mean, some people don't believe, oh, no, you should be, you know, up to the gills in debt and use your own money to make more and stuff. But there's, a, there's just an easier lifestyle. If you don't have to worry about if everything crushes, you're, you're going to have to worry about losing your house. And where's that cash flow going to come from? So we mm -hmm. personally paid off all of our debt and have different investments mm -hmm. and... I, I travel a lot. I, this year I've been to Peru, um, Costa Rica, Indonesia. Wow. Um, Cabo. I've been uh, everywhere. California. Whenever I call you, you're like, I'm surfing. I'm surfing. Yeah. I, <laughs> surfing's still in me. I'm not nearly as good. I went to Kelly Slater, a surf ranch, which is really hard to get into. Yeah. And that was unreal. It's, it's, if it's you're fun. a surfer, it's like everybody wants to go at least once. It's a big bucket item list. Wow. But 
Yeah. So what's next, man? Are you going to start something else up or are you going to keep surfing? You know, surfing there's, or? there's a couple <laughs> different concepts I'm looking at doing. I don't yeah. know if I want to do a store or a different catering and concept. Maybe something that I think I've got something and, and we'll know next summer if I, when I start it. Um, just a different concept of, of uh, food for a party. Well, and it'll food. be a lot more expensive than a regular catering because of what it is. But I'll be able to decide when I want to work, when I don't want to work. And I ran it through. I mean, the, the great thing, too, about the barbecue is we met anywhere from bikers to ballerina to billionaires. <laughs> and I've talked to some of those I billionaires. Ballerina and billionaires. Yeah. And we, we also give to the uh, uh, Ballet West here. Oh, yeah. To the, um, um, uh, there's another, I can't think, Art in Motion. Okay. And we just helped sponsor a show they just did. Helped paid for all their lights and sound and stuff like that. And, nice. And they bring in kids that don't necessarily have the money. Mm -hmm. And they, they, it gives kids that don't have the opportunity to, to show what they can do mm -hmm. to, you know, as easily. But this gives them great introduction to that. And That's these people cool. help them out. So it's, it's always just giving back just a little bit. Are, are you... Or do you get bored now? I mean, after you transact, do you get bored? Um, or you're like, man, I miss being the mayor there. Yeah, I do. Right. I do. I do. <laughs> but, you know, when you go, after a while you go corporate, it's a different deal. You've mm -hmm. got different teams. So at some point you kind of go in and you interrupt it because oh. they report to different people and it's a different de decision process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could be telling people things that other people have told them different. And, oh, yeah. And it's. It's good. I mean, we have eight restaurants now. We're hoping to, I think, do two or three next year. Nice. Um, out of the state or, you know, St. George or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, now traveling is kind of my thing. And, and I've, I that van you showed in that clip, if it turned out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a Mercedes van, and I've got to customize. Not like a regular Winnebago type thing. It's got thing. a kitchen in it. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little pull-out kitchen. It's really an outdoor thing. It's it's you been living fun. in that thing most of the time now? No, no. Oh, my wife and said, have you even stayed too many nights in that? It's like, no, because I, I end up going to places where somebody has a house. Oh, okay. So, but, uh, you know, I'm going to go. I got a fishing trip planned on it to go up in the mountains. It's four-wheel drive. It's got a big, huge bar light and solar panels, and I can go off the grid for, wow. for a while. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm real fortunate to be where I am, and... And, you know, that's what I also tell you, know, I've got a son 24 and he finished his degree and had a job and didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Son, you're only 23, 24 years old. Go back, get another degree if that's what you want or go get work experience and where you want to be. Mm -hmm. There's really no sense in being miserable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's easier with money. But if you're not happy day to day chasing your dream mm -hmm. or fulfilling your passion, then I think it's just kind of wasted trips around the sun. That's true, huh? So, you know, I tell my son, go back, find it. If you do this other thing, you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. You've just eliminated one of your choice. Mm -hmm. You know how you think, oh, I got to, when you're that early young, you think, I got to find this, but I'm going to be the rest of my life. I didn't start the barbecue business until I was 54 years old. I'm 60 now. Man, yeah. And so. That's a pretty quick growth plan, though. I mean, you guys did it and it worked really well. Yeah, I mean, the first two stores just blew up or crazy it's i mean incredible. it's lying out the doors and and that's when we took on a partner because we do what we do best we do the food and the ambiance and they do all the corporate stuff which even though i have a finance degree i i'm not a mm -hmm. corporate guy i want to summarize some of your wisdom here i've tried to take notes sure here. so for everybody um so uh few important things if you're going to go in the restaurant business your food's got to be awesome right it's got to be on right. point the experience has to be very good as well. So not just the food, but the whole experience. Yeah, I mean, things are going to go wrong. So it's what you do to correct a situation too. If you see, I mean, I can see somebody eating ribs and if they don't look like the meat's coming off the bone where you bite, I, I'm like, hey, wait, stop eating that one. Let me get you another one and oh. bring about one that's perfect. And he's, he can I've see the I've seen you do difference. that before, I think. I think I've seen you do that before. Yeah. So you care to that level. Yeah. And then the third piece of that is give back, right? Because right? it comes back and you're helping the community Hey, whether it so comes important. back or not, you just do it. You never give anything with expe expectations of something coming back, right? Mm -hmm. The universe is weird because typically the universe knows, right? Right, right. And it gives you the energy and the passion. It makes you feel good too, right? Yeah, it makes you feel good more than anything. Sure, things come back to you and, and you don't ever know how they are. I mean, you can, you can be doing a food for some foundation and five years somebody goes, hey, I saw you at that thing. It's the kind of stuff I like to see. Would you like to work with us? You know? Yes. Yeah. That's killer. Um, here's, a, here's another one. 
um, when you're starting a restaurant, make sure that you're the mayor and be there a lot. Yeah. Like, don't just leave it. you got to be there yeah. to be involved. Everybody's right? got a restaurant they go to. And you can even get away with not having the most incredible food if it's a great experience. You yeah. know what I mean? you got places that you go to are fun and... You know, yeah. somebody's got an off-color personality or, or, you know, they're just jokers or something. You're like, oh, I like, place, food's not the best here, but I like going there. I like to see Bob, you know? Yeah. So that's killer. Um, let's see. When you start a location, don't take $800,000 million dollar loan. Start on the cheap. Yeah. Do what you can do by cash. So that way you're not dead ridden right off, off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, that's what worked for us. And I... I you got to really know if your concept's going to work or not. I get people bringing concepts to me and they got this all luxur luxurious thing and stuff. And it's like, man, you're going to, people do pull it off, but unless you got a lot of backers with you that want to go for a ride, I mean, the success rate of restaurants is probably less than 20%. So or make something. sure concept works. Right. <laughs> all right. We'll get this one too as well. You guys might need to watch this podcast twice to get all this stuff. Cause there's more. Um, work with your employees and be really flexible with them. Be there right. for them and they'll be there for you. Right. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, give a hand to people, um, which is really, really important. And watch your employees and your staffing and make sure you have those caliber of people that, that you want in your work to represent. Right. I mean, you can build people up along the way, which is good too. But you've got to hire some people. Not everybody... It's just good to bring in pros. I mean, there's things I didn't know how to do. You know, like I said, I've never done payroll. I've never done uh, inventory. I've never ordered food. Mm -hmm. But I had people do that. And they, they'll do it better than you do, you know. Mm -hmm. and, or you'll get your uh, vendors. Like we've used different, you know, Cisco and stuff. They'll help you on that too. Don't be afraid to reach out. We had a good friend, or we still have a good friend, Johnny Kwong. Mm -hmm. You know Johnny? Uh, Naked Fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he's no longer in the restaurant business, but he was so good to us of like things we can check people like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about how we're doing this or our food cost or, or our menu pricing? What, what do you think? You know, and, and there's always people that are willing to help other people. Mm -hmm. That's Mentors, what I find right? Like right. In the industry. Right. That's what I've done. You know, in the computer industry is reached out to people that have done a lot better, that have been the old, you know, old hand in the game. Right. And most successful people are very helpful. Yeah, you know? and, and you know, and you're going to run some that don't really want to give you the time of day, but you'll see overall most there are, most people are really great people, mm -hmm. like you, man. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I mean, coming on the show, sharing this with these the, the, these uh, viewers out there is incredible. This is we haven't had a lot of people in the restaurant business talk about how to start it from nothing. Yeah, and in six years, you've created a phenomenal thing, transacted it, and right. you're going to be doing more stuff and. You retired. You could retire, and you're probably going to do more. Um, but it's so cool that you created that. That's pretty quick, man. Well, it's Six pretty years. neat to drive up and down the Wasatch Front, anywhere from uh, Farmington down to uh, Provo. We have restaurants now. Yeah, and people are enjoying that. Stuff uh, you that get people coming in the restaurant, and hey, I knew you back when, and this and that, and you know, oh, you know, and having a twin is kind of a niche thing too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's been good. It's it's been a good life. I en I enjoy that part of it, but. Chase your passion. If you're not happy where you're at, find out how to make money with what you like to do. I mean, there's things you don't make a lot of money at, whether it's school teaching or something like that. And, you know, there's incredible teachers that love it, right? Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's no sense in being in a desk job that you don't like. Yeah, you find out something you love. Yeah, you, you see people all the time. How's that guy make a living, you know, jet skiing or, or whatever? I have know? to add one piece to that, though. Um, just for example, though, I love, love, love computers and I just yeah. love computers. But one thing I don't love is um, putting out like employee fires and problems like that or, you know, doing financial analysis and stuff like that. Even though I do have a great person to do that. Yeah. yeah as a business owner, you got to still understand your numbers. And right. Um, sometimes that's a grind to me. Yeah. So but I, so what I say is, look, if I'm going to work, you know, eight hours, 10 hours a day, whatever it's going to be, um, I dedicate... 10 to 20 percent of that time to forcing myself to do things i really don't love oh right right um you got to do that because it's not all roses right like right. you have to but at least the majority of the time if it's like enjoyable stuff well mary is cpa she'll do that for you that's, <laughs> that's the what same I mary CPA. <laughs> <laughs> no i just love it man you know i've watched your success over the years too and uh so we've probably known you like six years and to see you grow yourself and Learn about all your different uh, businesses and stuff. It's it's great to Thank see you. that. And I remember sitting down with you 
in your 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 restaurant. It was pretty new. Yeah. And we we're eating, and you were being the mayor. I, mean, I was eating ribs. Like, what do you think of those? Yeah, <laughs> like, what do you great, think? how man. are those, man? Yeah, man. And I, I, I like, can stay around too long, but just tell me to go. You know, <laughs> it was good though. But I, at that point, I knew that you yeah, were on to something because not only was the food good, the care was there. So thank you. Amazing. Um, so now I know you're not a big social media guy or anything, and um, but uh, people can find R and R obviously Google R and R barbecue and they can eat what you created there. But uh, is there a place people can find you? Yeah, it's the Rod Spot on Instagram. The Rod Spot. And that everything I put on Instagram goes over to Facebook. Okay. The Rod Spot. Yeah, you got to get invited. So um, just ask for invite. Yeah, ask for an invite. Okay. And then when you do let people into the Rod Spot, if they message you though, is it cool? Yeah. Oh man, you, uh, please do. Question, or? You know, even if you're a barbecue guy, I'll help you on barbecue because I always think there's, you know, people like, well, what do you think better, this place or your place or this or that? And I say, you know. This is a weird analogy I use. It just hit me, but kind of makes sense. A guy will come into the restaurant, and his wife's a brunette. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll say something like, you know, what do you think of this place? And then I said, well, here's how I look at barbecue. Your wife's a brunette, and she's a 10, right? What's he going to say? Yeah, you know. Yeah. I said, so if, there, if there's your wife, and she's a brunette, if there's a blonde and a redhead here, would they be dogs? No, they're still 10s. <laughs> they just have, like, barbecue, another different flavor profile. Yeah. So there's... There's more than one good place. People have specific things they like or don't like, but you don't have to tear down anybody else's product. You've always taken the high road. I've never heard you speak poorly about competitors or anything. You're always taking the high road and saying, uh, we're you, great at you what you we do. Stuff. And you know what? Also, another thing, too, is go to different classes. Like, I've been to barbecue classes to compete. Where do you go to barbecue class? They're all over the United States, but I've been okay. to some of the best. Okay. And you, you don't necessarily going to cook like them because it's it's just hard to cook exactly like somebody else especially with barbecue so there's so many variables but you pick up little nuggets along the way oh yeah and it's all the little nuggets that you pick up until the end you got a big bag of nuggets and you're you're going man things are so much easier because i'm paying attention to what people are telling me maybe you do this maybe you hold your food this way maybe you buy this way or something like that so don't be afraid to you know, go out and educate it. Don't listen to people that say you're not going to make it. Those people, yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're out there. You're not going to make it. They'll put doubt in your mind. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? If you don't make it, that's all right. Go on to your next thing. Mm -hmm. That's the secret, Yeah. Man. So just give it your best and yeah. make it happen. And get rid of the naysayers, man. Don't, the don't haters, talk to yeah. the haters, man. Taylor Swift has it right. <laughs> <laughs> what did Taylor Swift say? By haters? Oh, I, what's that song? I can't think of it. <laughs> the song about haters. We can Google yeah, it. Yeah, Google it. <laughs> so. But yeah, man, enjoy life. And it's it's got its challenges, you know, personal and family and stuff still along the way. But, um, you know, there's so much opportunity out there. We're in the best place in the in the world to seek your dreams. And and it's not always about making money. It's Maybe it could just be helping people, what you do, and you still have your job. But, Find that niche that you like to do that makes you feel good and you can help people along the way. Man, you're awesome, man. I appreciate you. You bet. Guys and girls, uh, watch this over and over. If you're thinking about starting a restaurant business, this he's giving you the recipe how to do that. And then go to the Rod Spot on Insta. Add him. It's a private group, uh, private page, but uh, he'll accept you most likely. And if you have questions, gosh, I'll answer these questions for you. You know, to... To pay, if you were to charge to answer a question like that, it would be tens of thousands of dollars for the advice. So thank you for offering that for the for the viewers out there. Yeah, seriously, get That's a hold of wild. me, and I'll I'll be happy to help anyway. That's so awesome, and you're such a giving guy, man, and I and I appreciate that. And and, and with all your new endeavors, I think they're all going to turn into gold. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank <laughs> you. You're awesome, um, guys and girls. Remember, there is no fee for this podcast. It's there with having people that are successful in their business, sharing how they did it so you can do it too at absolutely no charge. Again, and how do you repay us? How do you repay Rod for the time? One, execute like crazy. It's really important. Two, share it with those friends and loved ones and rate it really well, five star if you can. And then three, take 10% of your gain and give it to a great charitable cause. Give it, give it back to the universe with no expectation of a return. Um, in my experience, the universe knows these things and seems to present wonderful opportunities to you when you are just selfless in your gift. So. Do your gift. Um, join us every week at Dan's Mirror Code. You know, we're on YouTube now, um, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, iTunes. We're everywhere. Please, please, please watch us subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.